In our Sunday school lessons for the past month, we have seen how when you are obedient, when you live in obedience to God's instructions, then you will be able to move and take possession of the blessing that he has for you. But what happens when you choose not to follow God's instructions? What happens when you choose to disobey the direction that the Lord gives to you in order to take possession of your blessing? Do you still believe that you will find success? Do you believe that you will still be able to take possession of your blessing? That is what we'll be taking a look at here in our Sunday School lesson this week. So after spending a couple of weeks taking a look at a couple of the judges of Israel, our Sunday school lesson this week, it takes us back into the book of Joshua. We'll go to a moment right after Israel defeated Jericho, after the walls fell down, after they took the city. Let us remember that prior to Israel taking the city, Joshua, he told the children of Israel to not take anything away from Jericho that was accursed, that they were to take anything accursed that it would not only be a curse to the one that took the thing that was a curse, but it would be a curse to all of Israel. Keep that in mind as we now go into the scripture of our Sunday school lesson for this week. Our lesson opens up by telling us that Israel committed a trespass regarding the accursed things. We are specifically told here in the first verse that Achan, who was of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed things which it angered the Lord. One man's sin, it raised the anger of the Lord against not just himself, but the entire camp of Israel. Now, the scripture outside of our lesson there in the second and the third verse, we'll see that this information, it wasn't known to Joshua as he and Israel will see that they were preparing themselves to take the city of Ai. Joshua, he had sent the spies to Ai, and those spies, they came back with the report that the city would be easy for them to take. Israel, the spies said, that they would only need to use 300 men to take the city. However, as we'll see there in the fourth and in the fifth verse, that confidence, it was turned into defeat. As Israel, they fled before I, and I struck down, we are told there, about 36 men while they chased after the rest. So the defeat at I, it was a rough defeat for Israel, and it was very rough on Joshua. He did not take this defeat well. We have to remember that, that Joshua, he would recall on what the Lord has said to him, what God had promised, what, what God had assured to him. Let us remember that the Lord had promised and assured to Joshua that on his conquest of the promised land and, and taking what God had promised to the children of Israel, the Lord had promised him in the first chapter of Joshua that nobody would be able to stand before him. Nobody would be able to hinder him and Israel as they would take possession of the promised land. But here they are suffering a loss, suffering a defeat at I. And so Joshua, you have to consider, was thinking all of this over. Did God let Joshua down? Did God fail all of Israel? What happened? What caused, what led to the defeat of Israel at I? Now, we'll see there in the 10th and in the 11th verse that God, he came to a very distraught Joshua and he called for Joshua to get up. Now wasn't the time for Joshua to be lying down on his face in despair. Sin was within the camp. And God, he informed Joshua that sin was the reason as to why they fell at I. They had transgressed. They had went against his covenant. They had took some of the accursed things and they hid it among their own stuff. Now, when the Lord speaks of his covenant here, he is referring to the covenant that was made at Mount Sinai, all the way back in the days of Moses, right after the children of Israel, they were let free from the bondage of Egypt. When they got to Mount Sinai, the Lord, he desired to, to give his law to the children of Israel so that they could become a holy people. And Israel, 
they looked at the law, they heard it and they said, Hey, this all sounds great. The Lord desired for Israel to serve him and him alone, not any other gods, not any idols. And Israel said, yes, Lord, all together. They said, we will serve you only you within 40 days, within 40 nights that Moses was on Mount Sinai, Israel, they made that calf of gold and then they bowed down, they worshiped, they danced all around that calf of gold, breaking the covenant. The Lord is a jealous God, he said. He does not want anyone to be serving any other gods. And so here with the accursed things, guess what? Taking the accursed things, which would then lead to you serving and worshiping those accursed things, the Lord would not be pleased with it. He again is a jealous God. With these accursed things taken by Achan here, God, I want you to understand, he wasn't happy. He was certainly not pleased with Achan and with Israel. So in order to turn the ship around, we will see that the Lord said to Joshua there in the 12th verse that he would no longer be with Joshua nor Israel if the accursed things were not removed. They would need to remove the accursed things from the camp. And this still all holds true today. God does not dwell with sin. He does not dwell with wickedness. For all of those who desire to be in fellowship with the Lord, the Lord wants you to guess what? Repent. He wants you to turn away from sin. He wants you to trust in him. God will not abide with the sinner. So for all of us today who dwell in fellowship with the Lord, when we do happen to fail because we aren't perfect, when we happen to fall down, the Lord desires for us to confess the wrongdoings that we have done to confess our transgressions. He desired that we move in faith, confess them to him so that we can find mercy, so that we can be given that next chance, that next opportunity to make corrections. And then when we make those corrections, the Lord will forgive us. We must cut out the sin in our life so that we can abide with the Lord, so that we can dwell in fellowship with him. So after following the Lord's instructions to discern who was the cause of Israel's sin, we'll see that the tribe of Judah in scripture that is outside of our lesson, that they were taken and the family of the Zarhites was brought forth. Man by man was taken until Zabdi was brought forward. And again, of his household, we're told that man by man was taken until Achan, the one who had took the cursed things, was brought forward. Then Joshua, we'll see there in the 19th verse, he spoke to Achan and we'll see that he begged him to make his confession known to the Lord and to himself about what it was that he had did. Now what Joshua asked of Achan here, it puts me in mind of what John writes in 1 John, the first chapter and the ninth verse when speaking about seeking forgiveness from the Lord. When we transgress against God and God alone, we must go before the Lord, not being ashamed, not being afraid. We must confess our wrongdoings to him. And when we do this, the Lord, he is both faithful and just to show us mercy and to cleanse us of any unrighteousness when we have made the corrections in our life. God, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our wrongdoings when we transgress against someone else. In other words, when we trespass, when we treat somebody wrong, when we do wrong by them, we must go before the Lord, confess the wrongs that we have done. And at the same time, we must confess to the one who we have done wrong. We must repent so that we can find mercy in their eyes so that they can forgive us of the wrong that we have done to them. So what Joshua asked of Achan here is in mind of that. Achan needed to confess to the Lord. He also needed to confess to Joshua and to all of Israel as well. Though there is a difference here with Achan and the instructions that, that God gave to Joshua, he wouldn't be forgiven here. He had did wrong. He had sinned. And we'll see in scripture where the Lord has instructed Joshua that the one who had did wrong, he was supposed to be burned with fire. Now Achan, we'll see there in scripture that's in our lesson there in the 20th and the 21st verse, we'll see that he does confess to having sinned against the Lord. He, he admits to having seen a beautiful garment, seeing shekels of silver and a wedge of gold, and 
Then he admits that he covered those riches and that he took them. Those steps that Achan speaks of there in those verses, it speaks to the sin that is of the flesh, the lusting of the flesh, where one sees the riches of the world, sees that they are beautiful, then covets those riches, lusts after those riches, and then they go and take possession of those riches. The, the covetousness, the, the lusting for those riches, they have taken over the soul, which is why we have to be very careful as God's children when it comes to covetousness. Covetousness, it is a very dangerous spirit. When God has given you, when he has supplied your every need, when he has provided to you the desires of your heart, guess what? You should be happy with it. You should be satisfied with it. You should learn to be content with what the Lord has given to you. When you covet what someone else has, when you lust after the riches of this world, and then you move on that, you are committing a great sin to where you're not being thankful. You're not being grateful for what God has given to you. You're not being thankful. You're not being grateful for what God has done for you. Aiken, we should understand there in the 20th and the 21st verses, he admits that he was tempted by the riches of the world and and therefore he gave in to the temptations of the riches of the world and, and he took those riches and he hid them in the earth he tells us so joshua he relayed this information and had the hidden accursed things found and and laid out before the camp then joshua he took achan all the accursed things that achan had taken along with his sons his daughters and then all the rest that he possessed, and we're told that he brought it all to the valley of Acre. So as we've seen before, Joshua and the rest of children of Israel, they were to burn all of the accursed things. They were to burn the one who had transgressed, who had taken the accursed things. Again, this, this will sound harsh to us, but we have to remember what the Lord said to Joshua. The Lord has said that he would not abide with Joshua nor the children of Israel, so long as the accursed things were a part of the camp of Israel. So we'll see a very sad moment there in the 25th and the 26th verse where Achan and his house was stoned to death, all because he had transgressed, all because he had sinned. And then we're told that he and all that he had was gathered together, that it was burned with fire, just as the Lord had instructed. So what we see here in our Sunday school lesson is a very serious matter where again, the Lord, he will not abide with sin. Our disobedience, we may think lightly of it. Those who are outside of the faith, they may think very lightly of disobedience. They will even try to get you to, to be disobedient as well, which is why it is so important that we remember what Paul said about how wickedness can corrupt good habits. We must remember, again, what scripture always encourages us to do when it comes to wickedness. We must flee from it. We have to burn wickedness out of our life if, again, we desire to be blessed and highly favored in God's eyes. So that may require you to cut off people who aren't healthy for you. That may require you to, again, cut out parts of your life, things, old habits that are, again, not healthy for you so that you can live that blessed life, so that you can move and take possession of your blessing. Now, is it going to be easy for you to cut out people who, who may have been your friends or who may be family, who, again, choose to live in wickedness? Will it be easy to do that? Probably not. But again, we have to strive, again, to live a life where we are holy, where we are righteous, and again, where we are blessed. Will it be easy for you to cut out those bad habits? Probably not. But again, do you desire to be blessed and highly favored? Do you desire to, again, take possession of the blessings that the Lord has for you? If you do, then you must live in obedience to his word again. It is best for you to cut out all of the things that will draw you, that will pull you away from being obedient so that you can move in obedience. And again, as we have seen, when you move in obedience, you will be successful. If you choose to be disobedient, it's going to be tough. 
it's going to be tough for you to take possession of that blessing. So keep these things in mind as you move forward on your journey. Thank you.